Thank you to those who have come back from last night. That's sort of encouragement. Uh, and uh, there's a sort of title for today. Ignore this chap. He may go away again in a minute. You never know. Dumbass is dumb. Right, okay, fine. Um, just, uh, I think Sean must be taller than me. There we go. Right. Um, I think maybe I'll just pray for a moment uh, before we begin. You might want to pray with your eyes open and just look around at everyone who's here. And uh, let's say thank you to God for bringing everyone here uh, on a Saturday. This is a key day in the life of the churches of this team. And uh, thank you Lord for bringing us together. Uh, and we pray that you will take us through the day and guide our minds and our thinking uh, as we seek your mind and your will. Amen. Okay. Question. I might use this microphone. What sort of church are you? Are you a magic roundabout church? Or are you a gospel train church? Just to try and explain what I mean, I'm going to try and use this. Yes, this works. Now, a magic roundabout church is the sort of church uh, where it's all about, well there's a routine during the week, but it's all about also the, 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 the circle of events during the year. So it's approaching lowering the Sunday, so we do lowering the Sunday. And then it gets to Lent and we do Lent and it's Easter, so we do Easter and then it's, it's the spring fair. Yeah. And then it's, you know, it's, it's whatever you do in the sense that it's a summer fair, yeah? And then it's, it's harvest, so we do harvest and then it's remembrance Sunday, we do remembrance Sunday, like we did last year. Uh, and, uh, and then it's Christmas, so we do Christmas and we go round and round on the circuit that we set ourselves, that we don't really think very deeply about, we, we basically repeat what we did last year, at the appropriate time of year. Well, sort of magic. Those of you of a certain age will remember the magic roundabout. <laughs> so we're a magic roundabout church and we go round and round the year and that's what we're about. We just go round and round. I'm getting quite dizzy. I'll stop it. round and round. That's a magic roundabout church. Now, um, it's not to say, yeah, I'll come, there's a, there's a caveat to that, which I'll come to in a minute. But so that's a magic round about church. Now, the gospel train church is a church that says to itself, well, we're sort of here. This is where we are. This is what it's like. Uh, this is who we are at the moment. This is where we are. Where do we want to be? Hmm. We think we want to be over there. So a gospel train church is a church that knows where it is and where it wants to get to. So it's on a journey from there to over here. This is a gospel train church, isn't it? Okay, trying to get here. Uh, and uh, this, there's a route marked out uh, in the rails, so we, we know roughly how we're going to get from here to over there. A magic roundabout church and a gospel train church. Now, the caveat is, of course, uh, but we will always go around the churches here. I'm in no way suggesting anything wrong with that. Uh, in fact, there's a lot right with it. We should be going around the churches here. But what's the focus? What's the thinking? The magic roundabout church doesn't really think much about where it's going. It just goes round and round. The gospel train church has got a journey to go. What sort of church are you? Maybe, of course, in real churches is a mix of the two. Another question. Uh, are you an open community or are you a closed friendship group? Just to explain what I mean here. That's Rublev's uh, uh, famous icon uh, of the, the uh, Holy Trinity and I don't know whether how well up you are in icons, you know, but uh, anyway, it's, it, they turn some people on, there's an icon, and the three figures represent the Trinity, uh, and it's an open group, uh, and, and, and the picture draws you in, 
centered around the Eucharist, uh, and, and it's as though you're invited in to, to join that group. And here's a way of understanding uh, the whole Christian gospel. Um, uh, God did not create you and me because it was lonely. You know, like you might live by yourself, so you get yourself a dog for a bit of company. Yeah? Yeah? Sometimes we, we, we almost intimate that about God. God was never lonely because God is already perfect community of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Uh, so there is this perfect community of love already. God is self-sufficient. God does not need us. Uh, but yet God created us in order to love us uh, and, and to, to, to invite us to be part uh, of God's own community. Uh, to join in, uh, to be drawn in, uh, to share that community of love. Uh, which is open uh, and, and beckoning to all. Uh, and so in our community of, of, of love, our earthly representation of that in the Christian church should have the same nature of being open to all. On the other hand, there is the friendly church. I'd like now to illustrate the friendly church with the help of about four volunteers. Um, I just want three or four people, if you just come up here and do something very simple, it's alright, you, you, you'll, you'll escape with your lives from this. Uh, but um, who, who's going to come? Yes, I thought we might have at least one. Yes, two. Yes, three. Thank you. Yes, we'll, we'll just leave, just leave. A couple more would be nice. Yes, cheers, thanks. Right, cheers. Uh, okay. Now uh, you're not in this spot. Can you go over there? And I'll tell you what to do in the next one. Right. Just stand there. Right. Okay. Now you are in a church. Pretend you are in a church hall. Okay? <laughs> it's after the church service, okay? And you come in here and you've got yourself a cup of coffee, you all have friends, you're delighted to see each other, and so you form a little group. How would that group look? That's the one! Right, and you all have your cup of coffee and chat it away to each other. This is a very friendly church, ladies and gentlemen, because they're all friendly with each other. Now, you're a newcomer. Okay, you too have been pushing the ball, give them a cup of coffee. Okay, Lynn, Lynn has a cup of coffee. Could you just come and stand over here then, will you? Now, you could normally tell the newcomer in a church, um, because, well, there they are. Um, uh, now, what are you going to try and do? You know, what's, what's, what's your strategy at this point? You could try and break in. No, don't do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what should happen. You get good practice, but all four of us do this so many times. And you can tell me you've got because you're probably admiring the architecture. Well, you'd be desperate to do that in here, wouldn't you? Uh, uh, you're admiring the architecture, um, or you're looking at the notice board. Yeah? If there is one, try to act normal. Yeah, right, thank you, that was it, yeah, thank you, yes, you, you got it, yeah, thank you, he, 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 it, was, it was a good attempt, that, yes, <laughs> yeah, right, yes, so, uh, there's the question, are you an open community or a closed friendship group? See the thing about a friendly church, uh, uh, very often what we mean is we're very friendly with each other, but we're so friendly with each other we hardly notice anyone we don't know, it's you. Um, so, uh, there's a couple of questions. Uh, buzz with each other for a few minutes. Uh, are you a magic roundabout church or a gospel trade church? Or a bit of both, or what? Are you an open community or a closed friendship group? Uh, it doesn't really matter if you talk to someone from your church or another church, you can pair notes with each other. Uh, if you just want to sit and think about that, well, that's, some of us are like that, do that, but uh, um, just uh, most of you will want to chat and compare notes and say, well, I think, oh dear. Uh, no, actually, we hear this. Uh, so do that for a few minutes and we'll see what results we have.
folks. Uh, thank you for that. You're animated on that one. Um, might just take one or two uh, answers to those questions. Uh, we've got a, a roving microphone with a, a rover to rove it. Uh, so, anyone like to uh, own up to what they were talking about and share something with us? Just for a moment. Yes, thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, sir, we were saying about you've got the, the circle, around about circle. Yes, you do go around it, but in that circle, you want you don't want to do the same thing every time you're in the circle. Like right. Uh, have yes. A mix of different mm-hmm. kind of services and, and activities. Right, thank you. You got that, the thought that you don't actually have to exactly repeat what you did last Easter, every Easter till the Lord returns. You do something, you can have a circle, but it can be different each year. Yeah? Right, thank you. There's nothing to stop us getting off the roundabout. Yeah, thank you. Okay? And there's a journey to be had. Yeah, I think roundabout is just telling Christians to your road. And that's the reason why I'm doing it. Because that's why the church here was originally designed. Yep. Yes. I mean, that's why you do it. Mm. Right. Why do we do the roundabout? It tells the Christian story through the through the year. Rather than another motive might be because we've always done that and it's comforting. Yes. I thought the uh, sort of the key word that you used was the indexing roundabout, or rather the lack of index, because yes. I think if you discard mm. yes. the uh, the magic roundabout altogether, then. It's like getting onto the train without your luggage or your ticket. Good. Thank you. Yes. Yes. That, you're absolutely right. That's what I was driving at. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. We were talking about the fact that um, being on a matter of roundabout um, start church, so that's a little bit easier. Because if you just go getting anything new up here, you yes. have to put much time and effort into finding something different. Yes. Um, and when mm. time is precious and not that many people in Yes. 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 Thank you. It's the default rather than the choice. It's easier. It takes less resources. Yep. There's both a strength and a danger in that. Yeah. Mm. There's an aspect of welcoming, and it's rather late to to, to, um, to copy at the end of the service to to, to welcome newcomer. This is more than to walk the nuclear well, nuclear box to the door. Mm-hmm. So that nuclear box to stay. Yes. And you bring them to coffee and bring them talk to them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely right. Yeah, another one at the back. Hmm? Uh, yeah, I can't say this is just my opinion, but so <laughs> <laughs> Tell us your opinion. I discussed the matter with you. On the matter of roundabout, I, mean, yeah. I, I do think that some of those services are the biggest of the year. I'm not just talking about Christmas, but remember something. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's surely how you convert those into opportunities for people who come once to come again. Because there are most people outside the church, no time on Sunday, no moment on Sunday, no time yes. on Sunday, no time 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 on Sunday, so you're using those big events of the year. They are big mission opportunities. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Thank you. That was, that was excellent. Uh, provoked a bit of thought. Um, here's another question. Uh, I don't know if you've ever, ever heard this verse before. I don't know. It's quite obscure. Uh, but this is what it says. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus is a man on a mission. God loves the world. God invests himself 
in the world and God wants to rescue the world. There's a mission here. There's a mission of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Uh, visibly uh, the one who's on that mission is Jesus. Uh, but it's God's mission. Uh, fancy theologians sometimes call it the Missio Dei, just to show off. Uh, but it, it's uh, the, the mission that the church has is not the church's mission, it's God's mission uh, to the whole world. Uh, and he's in the whole world. Jesus is a man on a mission. What about us? Uh, so this, is, uh, this, this, this sequence is about moving from what you might call style and maintenance church to a mission church. Now, in going through this, I don't mean to imply that I think any of your churches are maintenance churches or mission churches. I, I don't really know. Uh, and, and as usual, most of us are a confusing mix of the two. Uh, but it may help a bit of clarity of thinking uh, to contrast uh, the two. And the attitude change that's involved in, in, in ceasing to be what I would call a maintenance church and being what you might call a mission church. What is the big difference Where, you know, in terms of attitudes and behaviour, etc., etc.? Well, here are some marks of a maintenance church. Uh, and uh, here are some P's. Alliterations are beloved of people like me. And here are seven of them. So it's not quite a world record, but it's not bad. Uh, <clears throat> marks of a maintenance church. What do we focus on? If we're about maintenance, and the first P, of course, is uh, you see, we've already seen probably one or two treasurers in the room uh, uh, paying the bills. Now, the point is, we always have to pay the bills. We do, we do, we do. Uh, uh, but uh, what's the focus of our meetings, uh, of our ambitions, uh, of our worries and fears? Uh, what do we rejoice over most in a church? Uh, and uh, what's on the agenda of the PCC? <laughs> so, number one, number one P, paying the bills. Focusing on that. Preserving the buildings. The P is on preserving there. Uh, preserving the buildings. The maintenance church is focused on its buildings. And we, we, you know, the, oh, the tower might be in trouble in 20 years' time. We should spend our effort this year beginning a fundraising effort uh, to, uh, to secure the tower. And that's what it's all about. Uh, playing the annual round. Well, I've just been doing that with the, uh, 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 the poor old magic roundabout church. That's what a maintenance church does. Protecting the past. Uh, uh, we, we feel that we honour the past more by preserving it uh, than by moving on into the future. And there's a fallacy there because, of course, the past was never static. Uh, the church has changed dramatically over the decades and the centuries. Uh, and different generations, have, in their own way, tried to develop church that's suited to their own day and age. And we honour the past by trying to do the same in our generation not by fossilising it for a previous one. But it's, there's a bit of a temptation to protect the past. And the maintenance church pleases the insider. So if there's a few people who don't like that change, that's, we don't do it. Uh, we please the insider. We're not looking out to what it, this might do in the community or in terms of mission or evangelism, but we please the insider. And we prioritise the present. We've not got vision for the future. It's what happens this week. It's, uh, uh, it's today's activity uh, that takes our time and our focus. And finally, uh, a maintenance church pretends that change isn't really happening. Uh, uh, you know, elephants are in the room and we ignore them. You know, there's no one in this church age between 25 and 45. Uh, and even 50, and we don't talk about that. We pretend it's not happening. Uh, so there's seven P's of the maintenance church. I hope they're not too painful. Uh, there's another P. I'm on a roll. Uh, uh, and uh, you might like to you know, just 
Think about that checklist. Ooh. 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 And uh, how it applies to your church. The seven P's of a maintenance church. Now then, what about the leaders of the maintenance church? Well, by and large, a maintenance or inherited church is led by maintenance leaders. Uh, so, a maintenance leader will focus uh, very honourably and profitably, another P, uh, on, on pastoral activities. Uh, so, it's, it's the immediate and personal uh, um, uh, ministry. Uh, of, a, of a vicar or a warden or whoever it is. It's a tradition friendly style of worship. Uh, what we've inherited, what we've done in the past, tends to dictate what we do now. Uh, often uh, that sort of church is shrinking. And the key question that this church has, this maintenance church, is how do we keep going? Uh, oh, you know, the, the younger people don't want to know uh, and things aren't quite like they used to be. How do we keep going? <clears throat> That's a maintenance model uh, of church leadership, uh, focusing on the current round, the weekly round. How do we keep going in our straightened circumstances? So, that's something about a maintenance church. You can gather, by the way, the more astute of you might begin to realise which sort of church I personally prefer. <laughs> now, I don't know whether you've picked that up yet or not, uh, but uh, here we go. Uh, uh, here's some marks of a mission church, and here are seven more P's. Okay, this is, this is a triumph of alliterative teaching, this is. Uh, um, a mission church plans a strategy. Uh, I think in this diocese you have transformational plans. Is that right? Many other dioceses call the same things mission action plans. Uh, and this, this idea of planning a strategy is coming throughout the Church of England at the moment. Uh, but a, a mission church does more than uh, as, you know, has written a transformational plan and sent it off to the bishop to keep him quiet and happy and then you put it in a drawer and forget about it uh, uh, a mission church actually does it um, this, is, this is quite a revolutionary idea that you actually can do the thing that you tell the bishop you're going to do um, when we tried to introduce mission action plans in Nichely or Diocese we got a lot of opposition uh, and uh, I discovered, Bishop and I discovered that the, that the main source of the opposition was not to the word mission or to the word plan. It was to the word action. <laughs> that was what the clergy and the churches didn't like. So we called them, for the first three years, we called them mission plans. Uh, and that was, and then we begin to stand to smuggle the A word in later on. Uh, so that, that was okay. So a mission church plans strategy. It prays for growth. Um, if, 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 you know, if we get nothing else from this weekend, um, just get those three words. Pray for growth. Uh, a maintenance church, that doesn't, really doesn't appear on the radar. Uh, a mission church will focus on praying uh, for growth. Not for his own sake, but for the sake of those whom God is calling and inviting. Praise for growth. A mission church presents the gospel, the good news. We do have churches um, that, are, that are very nervous of, of, of talking about Jesus. God's not so bad. Uh, but Jesus is the ultimate embarrassment to talk about. Uh, and so we don't really want to talk much about Jesus for fear of putting people off. Well, the truth is, normally it's Jesus who attracts people, it's the church that puts people off. Uh, uh, so, so why not put Jesus up at the front and keep the church a bit behind him and we might do better. So a mission church presents the gospel and is not ashamed uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, a mission church prioritises the outsider. What we do and who we are uh, is at least partly determined uh, by those who are not part of this church, but who might be. 
who might uh, be uh, uh, gained from the ministry and mission of this church uh, in, in a variety of ways, but including uh, might come to a Christian faith through the ministry and mission of this church. And that's all we focus on. We prioritise the outsider, not the insider. And the mission church participates in the wider community. The wider community. Uh, uh, that phrase, I'm afraid it has got a vivid mental image to me. Um, we were doing um, an institution, the bishop and I, in, in a church. And in Litchfield Diocese, there's a liturgy for this, of course. Uh, and there's always a representative of the, uh, of the general community comes and welcomes the new vicar. Um, and on this occasion, uh, a chap got up who was the, the biggest man I've ever seen in my life. He was, wasn't especially tall, but he was huge this way and that way. He was gigantic. And he got up like this and he said, on behalf of the wider community. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I lost it. There's the archdeacon stuck, stuck at the front, you know. And he goes, I just lost it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, the, uh, the mission church uh, uh, participates in the wider community. It's not a hole in the corner thing. We're out there. We are the, we are the heart of the, this local community. Uh, that's what a mission church does. A mission church pioneers new ways. It's not stuck in its own rot, uh, but it pioneers new ways. That doesn't mean to say it jettisons the past entirely, it may mean that uh, a mission church does um, uh, an inherited model of church well and does a new model of church well and the two work together in harmony uh, they're, not, they're not fighting with each other, uh, but part of the job is for a mission church to pioneer new ways and a mission church plants new Christian communities uh, it uh, it's not only focused on what, what there is at the moment as being the, the only one true expression of church. It plants new Christian communities. So there are seven P's, uh, marks of a mission church as opposed to a maintenance church. What about the leaders of this church? Uh, a mission-focused church is led by mission-focused leaders uh, who are looking at uh, evangelistic activities and what the church might be doing. User-friendly worship. Uh, uh, what, what, what does a, a stranger who hasn't been to church for 27 years make of your service? If they come in, they're given a book and, and they're, you know, they're, they're expected to sit down somewhere. No one explains it to them. What happens? What we need to do now. What's right for now uh, rather than what was right years ago. Um, one church I was at, I was talking to the PCC and Vicar, uh, and I said, strange service time, you know, why, why is your church Sunday morning service at 10.45? Uh, and some of the older ones looked at each other, and hmm, oh yes, they said, we changed it about 14 years ago uh, to fit with the bus timetable, because there's a bus in, the bus in each direction arrived at, you know, 10.38 and 10.40, and several members came on the bus, and it was just the right time. But I knew that the vicar wanted to change the service time, you see, because the, 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 the church was full and he wanted to have two service times to, for mission reasons. Uh, so I then said, but um, the bus was stopped running seven years ago, as they did, you see. <laughs> uh, ah, but we've got used to it now, so we don't want to change, came the repost. <laughs> So, so the vicar then had a, an interesting couple of months uh, with the PCC. Eventually they did agree to change the service time. Uh, one earlier, one later, they started two services. Uh, and the church grew enormously from that. Uh, but uh, a great reluctance to change the service time suited to the bus timetable of 14 years ago. Uh, strategy should be based on what we need to do now. Uh, we're a movement, not an institution. So, um, a, a mission leader is not overly enthusiastic about filling her time with meetings and bureaucracy and committees, essential though they may be. Key question, how do we start growing? 
Not how do we keep going, but how do we start growing? So, one or two leadership things. Now, you may think uh, that, some of you may well be thinking there, uh, uh, it's all very well if you forget the maintenance and just do the mission, everything will fall apart. Yes, of course it will. But actually, mission churches tend to do maintenance better than maintenance churches do. Uh, they don't neglect it. Uh, uh, they tend to have more people, more energy, uh, bigger budgets, better motivation. Uh, because there's a, there's a bigger thing going on. And they're growing. Uh, so that's my observation. Uh, that actually, if you want to do maintenance well, become a mission church. Uh, and the maintenance will get done better. But what preoccupies minds and fills agendas? Uh, a friend of mine, looked, when he became a vicar of a church, looked at the PCC agenda uh, and realised that every month the PCC was discussing maintenance and finance issues and that was about it. Um, so uh, he, he, he said, we'll discuss each of those issues once a year. We'll discuss finance once a year. We'll discuss buildings once a year. Uh, and, and various other practical issues. Uh, and the ever-present items will be mission evangelism and growth items on the, on the PCC. Uh, we will trust the two or three people we appoint to do finance and buildings to just get on and do it, and they can report to us with an annual report, uh, and, uh, and, and we'll trust them to get on with that side of the business, while we focus on the main core business of the Christian Church, we're a mission organisation, uh, not, a, um, not a buildings organisation. Um, and uh, from, from that moment, his church actually grew rather spectacularly. Um, the church in Sheffield is called St. Thomas Crooks, and, and my friend is Robert Warren, uh, and that church grew to over a thousand people on a Sunday, uh, through being mission-focused. Um, so, becoming a mission church. Where is your church on the scale of maintenance to mission focus? You get the scale? If you're, if you're entirely focused on maintenance, you think one. If you're entirely focused on mission, you think ten. So just have a quiet think about where you what number you would ascribe to your church on that scale of focus. Uh, of what we're about. Uh, have a quiet think. Those of you who only know what you think when you hear what you have to say, some of us are like that. Some of us just need to think like that and cut other people out, do that. If you only know what you think when you hear what you have to say, then say it to your neighbour and um, we'll, we'll get some scores in a couple of minutes' time. So have a go at that. have a show of hands as to where, where you put your church in terms of numbers. Um, we'll try and put it slightly. Uh, we won't ask who's put a one. Um, but uh, if, if in your mind you thought uh, we're a one, a two, or a three, could you put a hand up and let's see how many, we've, how many hands we've got for that? Ah, that's it. Yes, 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 a few more. Yes, just a sprinkling there. Uh, assessing at a one or two or three, four, six, eight, about nine of you. A four or a five? Ah, that's quite a lot. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, 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 nearly thirty. Okay? Right? Uh, six or seven? Right? And four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen or seventeen of you? Thank you. Eight, nine or ten? Thank you. Well, you, you, well done. You, you've demonstrated. Yes, please. Yes. 
They're not necessarily, thank you, interesting point that. You could have two scales, one for maintenance and one for mission, because they're not necessarily always alternatives. Yeah, point taken. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to do it in a certain way to, um, to, to, to create the contrast. Um, and you, you may have a church that's, as I've said before, that's mustered on maintenance really because they're focused on mission. Uh, and, and, and you might have a church that actually doesn't either. <laughs> You've given up. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, now that does lead to another interesting question, which is this. Um, is your church changing? Are you moving in any way? Are you moving from one mode to another? There's quite a few nodding heads there. Um, are you on a journey from maintenance to mission? Does, does that encapsulate it at all? Perhaps if you go around with a roving mind, might get one or two responses to that. People are nodding their heads. Somebody just say why you were nodding your head when I said that. And about a, a journey. Who's bringing it? Is somebody there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was uh, I joined in the church about ten years ago. Yeah. When I was eighteen. Yeah. Um, and I'd say that in that time it has changed beyond recognition really, from a place where it was very very much maintenance to moving towards the maintenance and the scale. Yeah. Right. Is, can you think of a specific sort of story or example to explain that? I'll put you on the spot there. Um, we, uh, yeah, about 10 years ago when I was joined, there was a music group that we started. Yeah. And um, initially it was quite hazard and it wasn't particularly polished and uh, it was a bit of resistance from the congregation, well, this is what we're doing. I'm yes. not sure about this, but now mm -hmm. I feel that, that especially over the past three or four years, it's sort of been an accepted as a part of what our church is all about. Right. So. Yep, thank you. Uh, and, and, and that's, so that's a style of music that's in the culture of a lot of the people around the, the church and, yeah, thank you. Okay? Uh, Anyone else like a comment on, on change? Yes, there's one at the front here. Hmm? I think um, I go to St. John's Church and I think over the last few years uh, we've been more outward looking and inward looking. Yep. Uh, we work on a project on the bridge on the Friday night, giving yep. free coffee now. And oh. that's the scale it goes up. That's been <laughs> an opportunity for us to share our faith if we are asked. Yes. Promote that at the beginning of their specific community. Yes. Mm. Most of us try to say while we're there. So um, that's part of the congregation that does that. It's not a whole congregational thing, but it's a, a different way of thinking. Yes. And those things yes. incorporated um, a healing service yep. into the main service. It used to be separate altogether. Yes. yes. But now it's a lot of the nuns and it's incorporated into the service where people can come up for healing or not, but it includes everybody. So yeah. I feel that we're trying to um, build a community within the church and in our actual community outside Good. the church. Good, thank you. Um, but participating in the wider community, the coffee is an example of, of, of that. Uh, pioneering new ways, the, 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 the healing, and that's something which a lot of people will go for. Thank you. Another one? Oh, next door. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where, where, was, where are you going? You come back to you. Yeah, right at the back. Yes, hi. I, uh, I think that we do some things very well, and some really um, in the trusting way, so we Yes, thank you. Uh, I mean, this is, this is almost just a game, you know, this is just get, get your thinking, it's not, you know, this isn't scientific, um, and that's what it's, it is, life, real life is far more complicated than that. Thank you. Yeah. When I heard you, um, a big service in January, yeah. I think you said, 
But you don't ask for it, you don't get it. And yes. Said, you must pray to the Lord. Yes. Uh, we have said, John, so do that, and it works. Oh, right. Just, um, you better unpack that a bit. Don't leave me dangling like that. We've seen people um, turn up at St. John's that would only have to come from. They just, right. it's not as though they've gone from 50 to 150. Yes. We are seeking new faces. It's unnecessarily invited uh, by any of the uh, congregants. Yes. Yep. They just appeared. And last, last Sunday, uh, 12 children. We have 12, 12 children in the service. We've known that for a long time. Wow. Other than a special occasion. Yes, yes. But we're seeing new faces. And, and how does the prayer work? What, what, what are you doing? We have, we have, we have a prayer, prayer. prayer breakfast on a, 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 on a Tuesday morning. Yep. At 7 o'clock. Or 5 to 7. 5 to 7? Yes. <laughs> don't, 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 don't ask the question, why can't you say it? Because there are 6 or 7, sometimes 8 of us. Yep. And we meet on Tuesday morning, and this is one of the things we pray about, and we also pray about as part of our service as well. Uh, as I said, it works. Uh, and since you started doing that, prayer, you say you've noticed that more people are yes. just turning uh, up. Different places. Yeah, thank you. Not the same people. Yes, yeah, right, brilliant, thank you. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's provoked one or two. There's a, we'll just take two more before we proceed because actually we're running out of time on this copy. But this is very interesting. So we'll take you in a second. There's a lady at my first. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I just would like to make a comment about prioritising the outsider. Yeah. I think there should be a code still on that, and that should be left to the inside as well. Because it's very easy to think that if you go to the Yes. Thank you. Yes, you're absolutely right, uh, and that, that we'll, we'll probably come on to that later. Uh, um, just, yes, that was one. Yes, there's a, quite a newcomer to inform me, it's been here about five years now. Yep. Uh, one thing that really impressed me right from the word go, and impresses me even more now, is the involvement of the children. They go out and they do uh, really good things at the school. Yes. And uh, they come and report back. And it's ah. so refreshing. I've never been in any other church mm. that has done it so well. Mm. And I know it's something that we really are building on at the moment. We've got to improve scheme now for what we actually do in their groups. Yep. And so, really, really impressed. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay. Right. We, uh, I'm just going to press on for the last little bit before we break the refreshments. Uh, some stuff about developing as a mission church and, and on going on that journey we've been talking about. Um, here, here are a few pearls of wisdom. Uh, be honest and accurate about facts and figures. Uh, work out what's going on. Do you know? Look at the numbers you produce for your statistics and mission form every year. Look at your service registers. Work out what's going on. Um, Take time to plan the future, don't they tell you that? You're here this weekend. Serious prayer for guidance, mission, evangelism, growth. You just talked about that uh, and how that's absolute key. And trying stuff. Uh, learning from failures. Uh, there's a lot of bishops going around now saying to churches, we think much better of you if you try something and it doesn't work than if you don't try anything at all. So please don't be afraid of failure. Uh, we think you're great for trying. Uh, and there's, you can always learn stuff from an experiment that doesn't work. You move on to, well, that didn't work, let's do this. Uh, and when you do have a success, celebrate it. Uh, and uh, you know, trumpet it and be, be happy about it. Uh, give voice to new people and new experiences. Uh, some churches are controlled by a small group who've been around forever. Uh, they may not have the positions, but you know, you know, that they they control in some way. Give voice to new people uh, uh, and, and, and new ways of looking and experiencing. Uh, uh, mission churches tend to collaborate with other churches on the same journey. They're not, they're not 
don't live in isolation. You've got wonderful opportunity to be doing that in this team, um, and you do together what's best done together. Uh, usually, the, the, the two main practical things uh, that churches do together initially are youth ministry and planting. You know, the usual thing, well, there's, there's, you know, we got, we got 12 children that come to our Sunday school now on Sunday, and that's great, they've got a group there. Uh, how many teenagers do you have? What's the peer group there? Uh, normally, uh, you work together for that rather than independently. But similarly, uh, we need a strong planting team, so we'll have two or three from each church to do something together. Uh, 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 a mission church actually believes Jesus promises you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth now I'm not necessarily suggesting that the home valley uh, view from Jerusalem is the ends of the earth but it's, uh, it's not far off uh, 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 no I haven't no. <laughs> Uh, Whitby, hmm. uh, uh, but uh, but that's the promise, and we believe it. Um, think of a people group you're trying to reach. Who are you trying to reach? You think like missionaries think. So you know you go to missionary training college, and in the old days you were taught how to be a missionary somewhere up, up some river in some remote country. Uh, what people group are you trying to reach? You need to learn to talk their language. There's a language school. To, to speak their language. Can you learn to speak the language of the people you're trying to reach? How are you trying to reach them? Maybe you, you've got ways of trying to reach them at the moment. How well are they working? Can we improve the way they're working? Do we ditch that and try something else? Do we carry on with it because it's promising? Developing as a mission church, the people groups we're trying to reach. Uh, one sort of key thing is how easy in this church is it to stop things, or to close things down, or change track, or tack. Um, it's normally relatively easy in churches to start something new. It's relatively difficult to stop doing something we've been doing. And we, we can't stop doing that because Mrs. Jones would be offended or whatever it is or we feel failures. What is it that stops us from stopping something and trying a different way? Uh, so they're just some stuff about developing as a mission church and you've just got two or three minutes to buzz about those things and your own ideas before I think we consume coffee and stuff in four minutes time, so a couple of minutes. Actually probably the best is if you go for two or three minutes when you when you're overcome by the